Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Guillaume Dufanois, Artistic Director of the Big Apple Circus. The Big Apple Circus is an award-winning presenter of live family entertainment that is also dedicated to outreach programs in healthcare facilities and communities across the nation. Guillaume has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Guillaume, for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. So the circus is a great topic. It's a great topic in terms of complexity of management, the complexity of the art, the diversity of the artists. Let's start talking about how do you create the art of the circus? Well, basically what, uh, what we do is that we tap into world-class artists and uh, the way that business is organized is that artists work many years into developing one act. And then with that act, they go from circus to circus. Um, so it's not the other model that some people have in mind of a family, a small group that stays year after year together and try to do something different every year. We tap really that uh, completely different class of artists. So uh, the way I usually work is that I pick a director uh, who will come and stage the show. And with that director, we collaborate on picking a creative team and then a roster of artists that would fit a theme. We, we keep it simple. We're not about making a huge production. We're not about uh, telling very complicated stories. We're really about delivering in a well-produced way, but in an intimate and very direct way, the best possible circus art. And you're an arts presenter, and, and so the, the process is to create an immersive experience for the audience so that the art can be presented in a way that creates that sort of concentrated experience without the complexities, perhaps without the, the, the bells and whistles that can sometimes be so di di distracting from the, from the art that is being presented by the artist, him or herself. Yeah, absolutely, and I think we have three elements that work for us and that we are absolutely attached to. One, we perform in the round, which gives the sense of the group and the community. You are with your family watching the show, but you also can observe across the ring, which is only 40 feet, you can observe other members of your community laughing at the same time, being in awe at the same time. So that part is really uh, the first connection. The second connection is that the size of the tent is such that we preserve intimacy. No, nobody is seated more than like 50 feet of the ring. And uh, compared to some other spectacles, that brings you into the action no matter what. Um, and then in the third aspect is that, as you mentioned, we do not put emphasis on production gimmicks, on we don't put masks on artists. We want to see right. a human being that does extraordinary thing, but at the same time, when you, when you observe that artist, you know exactly that it's a person who put their pants on this morning one leg at a time. So let's move away from the day of the performance and let's move all the way back in time to when you're just thinking about a concept. How does that work? How do you, how do you arrive at the concepts that you're putting together? I'm sure you have an annual schedule as a, as a presenter, but how do you arrive at that germ of the idea and then start to fill that idea with life? Well, we just used the time machine that puts us back three years before, three to four years, but uh, I like to use three years ahead of time. Um, the idea of a show uh, can come from different, uh, can come different ways. It's a chicken and egg kind of uh, question. What I like to start with is with a director um, someone who is not necessarily experienced in directing circus because I like a fresh look, but also somebody who is interested into getting into the world of circus. I, I, I would not be quite as excited as uh, to hire someone who has already a preconceived idea, I want to do my circus over there. I'm much more interested in somebody who says, look, I don't know much about circus, I enjoy it, and I have a perception of the Big Apple Circus. 
and its soul, its character, its mission, all of that. And then is there a way here that we can have a project together? That's the best way. Then usually uh, it's the director who comes up with an idea. It can be fairly vague, but it comes up with an idea. Then we work together, just the director and I, on refining it. I really enjoy taking directors to circus festivals or to other circuses. So we start to get a sense of what kind of acts we like, what we're pursuing for that specific production. Uh, then we pick a creative team. And as we do this, uh, we kind of, we write, it, it's an outline of a show. And it can be a period show, it can be focused on a, on a location, like we do this year with a Times Square uh, focused uh, performance. Next year will be about metamorphosis, changes, magic. Uh, we had uh, the year before that was really the roots of the American uh, Big Top, 1825. It was a really period show and we, except for one piece of music, we stayed really true to the period. So th this is really the way it works uh, because of the way uh, the casting rhythms are and, and cycles. I really need to book the acts two years in advance. And then uh, as soon as we open one show, we start the, the real production work of the next one. So those are production meetings. But, but by then, uh, we, we kind of know what, what the show will be. And it's a scripting process, but it's not prescriptive. Uh, it's very interactive. You're shaping together with your collaborator. And then as you start to consider what acts as you cast the show, those, those players are also going to have some things to contribute to your concept as yeah, well. Yeah, what, th what I think uh, is crucial is that we are not about the theme, we are not about the story, we are not about the director, we are not about me. We are about the acts, we are about the circus acts. And uh, one thing that I always really insist on is with any director, no matter the theme, no matter the plan, if suddenly we have not booked everybody and I run into a fantastic circus act that happens to be available, that act will be in the show. So it's the frame that is created, but, but it's a frame for presenting the act. That's right. For presenting are, that, that art. It's about presenting circus act. Our audience comes to see circus acts, circus tricks, circus thrills. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Yes, we present it well. Yes, we give unity to the production right. with music, with costume, with a set, with what the remaster will say. And, and we're very proud of that. I don't want to diminish it. But ultimately, we are about the circus tricks. And every show is a risk. Every show is, is a, uh, there is a threat of failure because if you're just repeating what constantly was successful in the past, you can be sure of one thing. It won't necessarily be the thing that's embraced in the future. Well, one, one of the uh, challenges that we have at the Big Apple Circus is that we have a very high rate of return. Uh, we have families who come year after year. I think uh, 60 or 70 percent of our audience has seen the show in the last two years. So uh, one of the uh, elements of quality that we bring, it's not only the quality of this production, but it's only the fact that it's completely different. From, from the past ones, and it, the next one will be completely different as well. So it's really coming up with, with a brand new concept every year. And that's why uh, it's so important to have different creative teams uh, to, uh, to bring you that kind of inspiration uh, year in and year out. And you also have full-time artists on staff. You have your musicians, you have others who, who are going to be on your on your staff and part of your team show after show. How do you make the decision what competencies, what qualities you want to retain on staff and what qualities you would like to bring in and refresh show after show after show? Well, what I think, yes, the band is pretty much set, although they have substitutes, but uh, the musical director is a key element of the team. And uh, we're fortunate that he has been here for years and. Hopefully, it will stay for many more. Um, as far as the artists, w there has been an evolution uh, in the history of the Big Apple Circus. There was really a fairly large uh, number of uh, co-company members 
uh, and that way up to five or seven, and that way year after year and practicing new acts. And, uh, and I have uh, taken a, a slightly uh, different direction with mm -hmm. this uh, because it's absolutely impossible for performers to develop every year a different act that technically is at the same level as someone who spends five or ten years developing one act. Right. And the standards have certainly evolved uh, with the access to, to the internet. Anybody can look at the best circus acts in the world. So uh, you are facing an audience that knows the business very well. And to be able to really bring the best and amaze that audience, I need to bring the best possible performers, the best possible acts that have been developed. So the path that I've chosen for now is that I'm keeping the ringmaster as a recognizable character, and he's under contract for, for several years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, our animal trainer is also staying on a multi-year contract, although she has the charge of coming up with different acts every year. And what I think, I'm, uh, anyway, what I'm aiming at is finding the right balance between familiarity right. and new and exciting and high-level acts. And, and that's the path that I'm trying now uh, and, and see how, uh, let's see how that works. So you end up with a flexibly configurable, refreshed experience that allows your jaded audience to not be jaded because they are, those that have purchased tickets for the last three years are going to come back this year and see something new. They'll see new performers, a fresh, a refreshed sensibility, and perhaps things that they've never seen before. Hopefully things they have never seen before. And, uh, and at the same time, they will have the pleasure of seeing uh, John Kennedy Kane or Jenny Vitbell mm -hmm. again. And, and they will, oh, great, look at what she did this year compared to what she did last year. That, that creates another level of connection, that familiarity. What is the um, interaction between the art side and the, and the business side like? Because you are going to be, uh, to a certain extent, uh, dependent on ticket sales and, and financial management and budgets and, and all those things. Well, I think the one thing that's very important is that being non-for-profit, uh, the Big Apple Circus is very attached to the quality of its programs, all of them. The, product, the yearly production as well as the community programs. And uh, the, the means to put together the best possible programs are really finding those means is, is really a priority. Um, the way we function, I'm an equal to the executive director, Lynn Sturp, and together uh, we, uh, we really manage the organization and set the objectives working with, with the board at the, at the governance level. The budget is pretty much set quite a bit in advance uh, because of the same difficult times that everybody has had in the arts. Uh, the budgets have been flat in the last few years. Plus you have a three-year planning cycle. Plus I well. have a three-year planning cycle. And, uh, but I have been fortunate once again that uh, the board has been absolutely 100% behind not cutting the production budget and not cutting the program budget either because everybody believes in the mission. And I think that would be a huge difference in the for-profit world. My budget would have been slashed. How did you get to the point where, where you're undertaking this task at this time of your career? Talk about your own career trajectory and your own evolution as an artist and as an arts presenter. Well, um, I came to the circus by, uh, by accident. Uh, basically, my first girlfriend, uh, who was my high school sweetheart, you would say here, was a gymnast and, uh, and a circus aficionado. And when I left the French Navy, uh, I went to live with her in Paris, and it was really a good old gypsy life. <laughs> and uh, she uh, introduced me to a, to a place where a retired circus performer was training people on, on trapeze. And it's that gentleman who uh, kind of out of not kind of completely out of the blue, uh, came up to me one day and said, hey, you don't want to put an act together? Your girlfriend is in a circus school. And I was like, moi? Moi? <laughs> and uh, he, uh, so I said, you know, you're 21. You think you'll never die. So I said, all right, I'll try. And that's, that's how I got into the business. Um, 
I created a few years later it was a different girl we don't want that story uh, <laughs> a different a different Aryan act and then it's with that second Aryan act that was a catcher uh, mm -hmm. that uh, Paul Binder saw us work at uh, the French National Circus and hired us so I came to the States in 1987 uh, with my rigging, a partner, and a three-month contract to work for the Big Apple Circus. And uh, they have never gotten rid, me, gotten rid of me since then. So talk uh, about the work that you do in healthcare facilities and in communities outside of the tent. So basically the idea is that uh, the live performance of circus arts does not need to be necessarily in the ring. And what happens in the ring the same direct performance, the same contact, the same respect from the audience, the same level of skills we bring in other places. So we have developed uh, a group of uh, professional hospital clowns uh, that work at the moment in 14 pediatrics in, uh, hospitals uh, nationwide. And basically we, we spearheaded the, the profession of hospital clowning. It was Michael Christensen who came up with the idea. Right. And, uh, and we, we have become uh, specialists of it. Uh, what's very interesting is that, uh, and I like to go on clown rounds with them just, just to see the work and to see the environment and to see the impact. So these, these performers have their artistic, artist skills, but they also train in tons of hospital procedure, hygiene, patient uh, privacy, tons of things. And then they are, they, they are facing an audience that is in a very tough setting and uh, who has not chosen to come see them, but the clowns are there and they show up. And uh, the first thing they do is they ask permission to come into the room because it's probably the only time that week that the kid who is the patient is empowered to say yes or no right. to anything. Right. Uh, and once they get a yes, uh, the second wonderful ability that they have is what we call read the room. And they feel very rapidly what the energy is. Right. From the kid, from the nurse, if there is a nurse, from the parents and they adapt and react and, 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 and go with that. And it's never an in-your-face performance, this is what I do. This is, how about this? How about that? And if it doesn't work, we step back. And always with aiming at, uh, again, a connection and a skill. It's the moment of dialogue. It's a real dialogue and, and you empower the kid, which remain absolutely crucial. But in the course of, of, of one round, where maybe the clowns visit 10, 15 rooms, they reach so many people because you reach all the parents, all the staff, and if you walk behind them, you see, you know, the security guard who is really bored on his chair and the person who is cleaning the rooms and who is having a hard time. And suddenly they pay attention. They, they listen to the clown, they get a smile, they, it completely changes, it transforms the atmosphere of the floor so quickly. What is in store for the Big Apple Circus over the next years? Well, what I think is uh, we have uh, a great know-how, uh, both on the production side and on the community program side. So uh, the dream is to really bring that know-how to more places. Uh, our community programs are very scalable. Uh, all of them can be developed uh, easily, not at a very high cost and in, in many locations. Very high impact. Very high impact. Uh, I think it's a very high return for not a huge investment, uh, for a high reward for a funder. Uh, on the production side, uh, we will remain with uh, one big top and, and one main production, but we are really looking at opportunities to bring the same kind of, uh, of production with the same qualities to different venues. Uh, it could be a theater, it could be, uh, uh, we put a show a few years ago in, uh, in Abu Dhabi in a huge convention center, and we were able just 
by the layout of the place to bring the intimacy back and, and present circus acts and circus arts the way this audience had never seen. So I think I'm really excited about other opportunities where we remain ourselves, but simply uh, do it in, in slightly different venues. With an unconstrained vision and unconstrained joy, Guillaume Dufrenois, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us, for sharing the Big Apple Circus with us, and thank you so much for your insights. You're very welcome. I love talking about it. <laughs>